Hey everybody, welcome back to Life in Room 27. I'm Miss Robinson and we're here today with another math tutorial video for you guys. Today, you're gonna to be getting two for the price of one. I'm gonna be combining lessons 2.1 and 2.2 in this video because both of those lessons are gonna deal with dividing by a single digit divisor. 2.1 is gonna talk about how using estimation will help us in placing our first digit in our quotient and how the use of compatible numbers can help you estimate your answer and know what place value position your final answer should be going up to. Lesson 2.2 is gonna be just strictly going over division and helping us get through those division steps and making sure that we check our answers whenever we can. So I'm going to be setting myself up with the whiteboard. I'm gonna show you some sample problems and combine those two lessons together and then we'll come back and wrap it up. See you in a second. So here's our first example problem, and this problem is from lesson 2.1. In lesson 2.1, we're focusing on how to make sure we place the first digit correctly in our quotient, and also making sure that our answer goes up to the proper place value position. And to help us do that, we're gonna be working with compatible numbers so that we can come up with an estimated answer, and then we're gonna use that estimated answer to help us out along the way in terms of making sure we've placed that first digit correctly, and our final answer, our final quotient goes up to the proper place value position. So when I look at the original problem 128 divided by eight, I'm gonna ask myself, what can I change the dividend to so that it's compatible or easily divisible by eight, but still relatively close to the original number? And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change 128 to 160, and my new problem is gonna become 160 divided by eight. And the reason why I changed 128 to 160 is because now I've created a basic fact for myself. I know that 16 divided by eight is two. And I can go on to use what I've learned in previous lessons and my knowledge of my powers of 10 to tell myself, and now I can just add that zero to that two. And I know that my estimated answer is 20. Now my estimated answer tells me a couple of things. It tells me that the first digit of the real quotient to 128 divided by eight should be in the tens place because 20 goes up to the tens place. Now the first step in solving your real problem is you wanna draw your division house, which is that symbol there. You're gonna put your dividend, which is 128, inside of your division house. And then you're gonna put your divisor on the outside, okay? So there's your divisor, there's your dividend. Now to make sure you actually place that first digit correctly, you're gonna find the digit that's in the tens place in your dividend, which is the two, and you're gonna box the space above it because that tells you that is where your first digit needs to be placed. Once you've done that, you're free to go into your division steps, and I like to write these letters here at the top to remind myself of the order of my division steps and what I'm doing. And we'll talk about what all that means in another lesson. But for right now, we're just gonna go ahead and divide this because this is a pretty simple division problem. So we're gonna start here. Now, because I've placed the box here, that tells me that eight does not go into one and there should not be any digit there, my answer. That tells me that the first thing I'm gonna do is ask myself, how many times can eight go into 12? and we should know that eight goes into 12 one time. We're gonna multiply one times eight, which is eight. Then we're gonna subtract tw 12 minus eight. Now when I'm subtracting, I know that I can't take two and minus eight, so we regroup. That becomes your 12, and you have a zero there. And now I know that 12 minus eight is going to be four. The next step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring down this eight I know that 48 is not a remainder because eight can go into 48 six times. Six times eight is 48, and 48 minus 48 is zero. So as of right now, I'm done with the problem. The first thing I'm gonna do when I think I'm done is I'm gonna check my final quotient. My quotient or my answer is 16, and I'm gonna ask myself, is 16 close to my estimate, which was 20? And it is, so we're good there. 
The next thing I'm going to do is say, did I place the first digit in the right place? And I did because I put a box there. I placed that first digit in the box, so I'm good to go there. Before we move on to the next problem, we're going to always check our work. So to check your answer to a division problem, you're going to use the opposite or inverse operation, which is multiplication. And you're going to multiply your quotient, which is 16, times your divisor, which was 8. And if your answer is correct, the answer to this multiplication problem should come out to be 128, which was your dividend. So we're going to go ahead and multiply 8 times 6. That is 48. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 4 is 12. This matches my dividend, which is 128. So I know I'm correct. Okay, so let's try one more problem with placing the first digit. In this example, we are going to be dividing the problem. Let me find a good one. We're going to divide 614. And we're going to divide that by 6. So step 1 is we want to come up with a set of compatible numbers so that we can estimate what our answer is going to be and place that first digit. Remember, your compatible number has to be divisible by 6. So I'm going to take 614, I'm going to change 614 to 600 because that is close to 614 and it's divisible by 6. I'm going to tell myself, oh great, I've created a basic fact there. 60 divided by 6 is going to be 10. I'm going to add that 0 because I know my powers of 10 and this tells me my estimated answer. So my real answer should be somewhere around 100. The first digit in my quotient should go up to the hundreds place because my estimated answer goes up to the hundreds. Now I'm going to solve the real problem, which is 614 divided by 6. So I'm going to draw my division house, put my dividend 614 on the inside, put my divisor on the outside. I'm going to remind myself my estimated answer was 100 and it went up to the hundreds place. So I'm going to box the area around the digit that's in the hundreds place in my dividend. Then I'm going to start dividing. 6 can go into 6 one time. 1 times 6 is 6. 6 minus 6 is 0. I'm going to bring down my 1. 6 cannot go into 1 and I have to represent that it cannot go into 1 by placing a 0 there. 0 times 6 is 0. 1 minus 0 is 1. I have another number to bring down so I know that 1 is not my remainder. 6 goes into 14 two times. 2 times 6 is 12 and 14 minus 12 is 2. I know 2, you guys can't see it down there, I'm sorry my whiteboard is not big enough, but I have a 2 down there and I know my 2 is a remainder because 6 cannot go into 2. So right now I believe that my answer is 102, remainder 2. Now, I'm going to first ask, did I place that first digit correctly? Yes, so I'm good there. Does my final answer go up to the hundreds place? Yes, so I'm good there. So of course the last step is I'm going to check my answer. So I'm going to take my quotient, which was 102. I'm going to multiply it by my divisor, which was 6. And if I'm right, the answer to this multiplication problem will match my dividend. 6 times 2 is 12. 6 times 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. 6 times 1 is 6. Now some people will panic and say, oh no, my answer here does not match my dividend. And it doesn't because you cannot forget that you had a remainder. So once you've multiplied, then you add the remainder, which was 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 1 plus nothing is 1. 6 plus nothing is 6. And it matches. So you're okay and you're good to go ready for the next problem. So those two examples cover lesson 2.1 with placing the first digit, using compatible numbers to, use to come up with an estimated answer, and using that estimated answer to help reassure you that your final answer is correct. Lesson 2.2, the primary focus is just pushing home the idea of your division steps, 
making sure you're doing them in the proper order and using them correctly and also using what you learned in lesson 2.1 to come up with estimated answers to figure out what your real answer should be around, what place value your real answer should go up to, and where to place the first digit in that real answer. So as you can see, I have DMSBR, and this is the lesson where I like to introduce a silly saying to my students to help them remember their division steps. So I always tell my students to remember the silly saying, does McDonald's sell burgers raw? Does McDonald's sell burgers raw? This stands for divide first, then multiply, then subtract, then bring down, and then ask yourself, do you have any remainders? Some problems do and some problems don't. So we're gonna use the problem 2,754 divided by nine to practice that. Before we do that, we're gonna come up with our estimated answer using what we learned from lesson 2.1. So first, I'm gonna ask myself, what could I change 2,754 to that is easily divisible by nine, but still relatively close to that original number. This one's nice and easy because I can just change this to 2,700 divided by nine. This allows me to pull out this basic fact of 27 divided by nine, which is going to be three. And then I'm gonna tell myself, I know my powers of 10, so I know I gotta add on those two zeros there. And that tells me my estimated answer is 300. Therefore, my real answer should be somewhere around 300. And the first digit in my real answer should be placed in the hundreds place. So we know those two things going forward as we solve the real thing. So let's go ahead and solve the real problem. We're gonna draw our division house. We're gonna put, I'm gonna draw it a little bit higher because last time I ran out of room. So let's put it here. Actually, you know what? Let's just erase all of that. So let's draw our division house here. We're gonna divide 2,000, what was it? 2,754 divided by nine. The first thing I'm gonna do is tell myself your final answer has to go up to the hundreds place. Cause I'll, so I'm gonna box the digit and the dividend that is the hundreds place because that tells me that is where the first digit needs to go. And then I'm gonna start going through my division steps, D. Nine goes into 27, three times. M, three times nine is 27. S, subtract, 27 minus 27 is zero. B, bring down, there's my five. R, is that a remainder? It's not a remainder because you still have digits in your division house to bring down. So even though five is smaller than nine, you still have digits in your division house that haven't been brought down yet, so that cannot be a remainder. So you have to tell or represent the fact that nine cannot go into zero, or nine cannot go into five, sorry, by saying nine goes into five zero times and go all the way back to your division step starting over. Zero times nine is zero. Now I'm at S, five minus zero is five, bring down. I'm gonna bring down that four. Ask myself, is that a remainder? This is not a remainder because nine can clear, clearly go into 54. How many times can nine go into 54? Six times. So when you realize something's not a remainder, realize that you're going all the way back to your division steps. So now I'm back at D. Nine went into 54 six times. Now I'm at multiply. Six times nine is 54. Now I'm gonna subtract. 54 minus 54 is zero. Now I'm at bring down. There's nothing left to bring down. Now I'm asking myself, are there any remainders? No, because my answer was zero. Now I'm gonna be double checking myself. Did I place my first digit correctly? Yes, I'm good. Does my answer go up to the hundreds place? It sure does. Now I'm gonna check my answer. I'm gonna take my quotient, which is 306, and I'm gonna multiply that by nine. And if I've done everything correctly, the answer to this problem will match my dividend. Nine times six is 54. Nine times zero is zero plus five is five. Nine times three is 27. 
And I'm gonna put a happy face because yep, this answer matches my dividend and I know I'm correct and I can move on to the next problem. So for lesson 2.2, I'm only gonna do one example because it's just making sure that you know your division steps, which we've practiced here and in the previous two problems that I showed you. And I think once you just have this written down on your paper, you remember that silly saying, does McDonald's sell burgers raw? It's just a matter of making sure you use your estimate to place the first digit, going through your division steps, and then always making sure to check your work because you can. And it's an easy way to make sure that you're correct. So I'm gonna be back in just a second with some closing thoughts. Okay, so those are your sample problems from lessons 2.1 and 2.2. In lesson 2.1, we were really focusing on understanding what a great tool using compatible numbers to come up with an estimated answer is. Your compatible numbers help you come up with your estimated answer, and your estimated answer helps you to place the first digit in your real and final answer or quotient. Just know that if your estimated answer goes up to the tens place, then your final quotient should go up to the tens place. And if it doesn't, that's a huge red flag that something went wrong somewhere. And that tells you, you gotta go back in that problem and figure out where you went wrong. Lesson 2.2, we really drove home the division steps. Remember that silly saying I gave you, does McDonald's sell burgers raw? So you wanna use that silly saying to make sure you're doing your division steps in the proper order. Um, so what I would suggest is when you write your division, when you write your division problem down, that you put the letters to that silly saying somewhere on your paper, D, M, S, B, R, and then question mark. And the question mark represents the fact that we don't know if we're gonna have a remainder. Some problems will have remainders and some problems won't. The only way that we know for sure something is a remainder is if after you've done that subtraction step, the difference of that subtraction problem, if the answer to that subtraction problem is smaller than your divisor, that means your divisor cannot go into that number and therefore that is your remainder. If the answer to that subtraction problem is larger than your divisor, that means your divisor can still go into that number in terms of division and you gotta go through the steps all over again. Remember, whenever you're dividing, always, always, always use the inverse operation of division which is multiplication, to check your answer. I always tell my students, if you have the ability to check your answer and know it's right, just take that extra second and check your answer. So I hope this video was helpful for you, and I look forward to see you, seeing you guys in the next one. Bye, everybody.